Not included in the ground mount is the 8-inch pipe and these 8-inch flanges that I had to buy locally to start the project. Here we are welding the flanges on the 8-inch pipe. The flanges are totally optional. It's just something that I had the skill to do. You really don't need them. The only reason we had them is just to make the pipe so it wasn't so long. Otherwise, it would have been over 15 feet long, and we would have had to wrestle that around. Yeah. This is the conduit that will be embedded in the concrete. I have it bolted onto the pipe with 8-inch pipe clamps. And I have it set at the proper elevation, so the conduit is just sticking above the concrete. I rented this uh, four inch core drill at the local rental place and I drilled the holes in the concrete that will accept the conduit into the pole barn. These are the sauna tubes that we're going to pour the concrete into. They're 48 inches in diameter and seven feet long. Here's the little backhoe that we use for this project. On this project, the concrete guy was Concrete Works out of Scandia, Minnesota. The backhoe proved to be just the right size for the job. It was a tight spot there between the hill and the barn, but it worked great. the print for the ground mount. You can see the one critical measurement is 22 foot 6 center to center on the 8 inch pipe. That is the what you had to hit. Here we have the 8 inch pipe set in the proper place and it is ready for concrete. Here I've run the conduit through the sauna tube and into the pole barn. You can see the top of the conduit will be above the finished grade of the concrete. Okay, here's the end result. The two pipes are sticking up above the finished concrete. 
and we're waiting for the next step. This is how the steel was shipped. Everything is in these two compartments except for the rails for the solar panels. These are the Iron Ridge rails that were shipped with the steel. There's a few pics that show all the components that came with the bundles. That is the picking knife that the chain fall would go on, and this is the other parts of the steel. This is the top insert that the chain fall hoist would go into and that would pick up the rest of the array at the proper time. There I have the chain fall hanging in position. The chain fall is set and holding the main bracket that will end up holding the whole solar array. The steel structure was pretty easy to put up, just needed a couple extra hands, a little bit of bulwark, and the bolts, a ratchet for tightening everything up, and a torque wrench. Here the steel has been completed and we're just starting to put the rails up for the solar panels. We had to wait about five months for the solar company to be free enough to be able to send some bodies to do this. See, I got a bucket hanging upside down covering that chain fall for the weather, but now it is in February when we finally got back to this project. We removed 28 panels off of the roof of this pole barn, and that is what we used on the ground mount. The crew is starting to get the wiring together on all the rails. These are the uh, optimizers for the, each panel. And they're putting all the, trying to keep, condense all of the electrical into separate rows here to keep everything tight together. Here's the solar array all pulled up into place. I'm sorry I did not get video of that, but this is what the end result looks like. And here's a few pictures from different angles of what this whole thing looks like.
So this is the winter position at our latitude. This is the spring and fall angle of the solar array. This is the summer angle of the solar panels. This is about 17 degrees at our latitude. And this is the tilt in action going from the lowest point to the highest point. Okay, this is our M MT Solar ground mount, and this is a 28 panel ground mount. Um, it's got uh, 28 Panasonic 335 watt solar panels on there. And there is our solar edge inverter. This does crank up and down. You can see these green hand cranks that are on both posts. Um, this is the heavy-duty model with the heavy-duty beams for extra support, and it's rated for uh, over 120 mile an hour wind. I think 116, 120, something like that. Now, when they do the, when they have to wire any wire that is within eight feet of the ground, has to be covered for safety, and this is just like a heavy-duty landscape fabric in a couple places. Um, I did, when I built this, I did put some, a set of flanges here. That's my job. I was a pipe fitter and we added some flanges just cause this pipe here is buried down seven feet in the ground. I just didn't want to get it too long. So, uh, when you build this, uh, you set the panels on and everything. And then this bracket here is lifted up with a chain fall up into place to get the, at this final elevation here. Um, but with a tilt style, a tilt style, um, it's with a tilt style ground mount, you will get more power out of your solar system because you can change the direction of the angle, solar angle, you could do it monthly if you wanted to. You do it weekly if you wanted to. And it does change from, from uh, 64 degrees at our latitude, a 45 degree latitude, from so about 64 degrees thereabouts in the winter time to 41 degrees in the spring and about set and fall and about 17 degrees in summer. So the bright, best part about this is that when I had the panels up on my roof there, the, the roof of my pole barn is very flat and the solar, I'm sorry, the snow won't come off very easy. So with this system that we have here, it'll be at such a steep angle, it'll be easy to get all the snow off all the time. And then I'll get, should get a higher amount of, of solar power for doing this. So, uh, MTC, MT Solar, they're out of Montana, multi-pole ground mount with a uh, Panasonic panels. 
Well, thanks for watching. Bye.